yeah, so just for everyone's background, then this is what we're doing with, um, uh, this is the, what we're trying to assess, what we're trying to measure is how well the plant is photosynthesizing. Yeah. And um, what we're doing with the BRICS meter is measuring the products of photosynthesis. And those products are all of these things over on the right hand side. And the point is to say that you can't produce all of these various products of photosynthesis without nutrients, without the minerals, the macro, the micro minerals, the calcium, the zinc, et cetera, et cetera. So photosynthesis starts with this first step. This is the primary um, process where we're breathing in the carbon dioxide, taking in the water. And again, we're using those minerals from the soil and of course the presence of sunlight. Those minerals act as part of um, enzymes and an enzyme really just means a catalyst. So it's, a, it's an enzyme that facilitates or catalyzes this reaction. It catalyzes the stitching together of the carbon, the hydrogen and the oxygen to produce sugar. And then of course, plus oxygen. And that is the very first product of photosynthesis, glucose. And when that glucose is produced and it's in the plant sap, for example, that is indeed one of the things, just one of the things that you're measuring with a, brief, a refractometer. So when we use the word sugars, we're measuring the plant sugars. Indeed, that is a very generic word, a very simplified um, idea of what we're measuring. Sugars are part of it, but they're only a small part of it. Um, but that is indeed the first step um, in the photosynthesis process. Then after that, then the plant takes that sugar, that which then is really a building block. That glucose is a building block for the plant to stitch that building block together like a brick and, and build all sorts of other different structures, build all sorts of other different um, plant compounds and, um, and other products of um, through these other kind of metabolic pathways. So, so using sugar as a building block and, and as the plant stitches it together, more lots of them together, it will then build all of these other things, things like more complex sugars, more complex carbohydrates. It will link in a nitrogen or a sulfur building amino acids, stitch those together, build proteins. Again, using the carbon from the sugar, it will stitch it together in other ways, structures to make fats and lipids, waxes, oils, other hormones, plant growth promoting compounds, vitamins, um, other smells and scents, aromatic or volatile organic compounds, all sorts of smelly things. And then, you know, colors, pigments, phytonutrients, all the antioxidants that we think about from a human perspective, human health perspective, all of those nice um, colors and blueberries and red peppers and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then also, it can also produce a range of defense chemicals, protective compounds. So these are the compounds that help to fuel its own immune system and deter insect pests or um, fight off uh, diseases, et cetera. Um, as well as then some of the all important root exudates, the carbon compounds that excreted out of the root system, which we now know are a really important, play a really important role in building soil organic matter. Um, so again, the point is to say that all of these other <coughs> secondary compounds, these also require minerals acting as catalysts as part of these enzyme systems and through these metabolic kind of pathways that the plant then takes that building block and turns it into all of these other things. So when we are measuring the sap and measuring the bricks, um, the, what's called the total dissolved solids, these compounds on the right-hand side is what we're measuring. It's not just the sugar, but it is also complex sugars and carbohydrates. It's also proteins. It's also literally anything that is dissolved in the plant sap we are measuring over here on the right-hand side. And the point is to say that, um, the point is to say that we can't synthesize any of these without those minerals. So you are indirectly measuring the nutrient density by measuring those products of photosynthesis because you can't have those without those. If the minerals are low, you're going to have low bricks. You're going to have low sugars, carbohydrates, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's the fundamental idea. If we just take it a step further to explain the idea of pest and disease resistance, here I'm now showing basically the exact same slide Again, same first step of photosynthesis to produce glucose, the building block. But the second step is then the plant will take that building block and catalyze it into these defense chemicals. So for example, anti-feedant, bitter compounds, anti-herbivory, things that upset the insect's stomach and that it can't digest or that are um, irritant, irritants to the, to the digestion. So it's just producing different, again, phyto compounds uh, from that building block. 
Um, again, cell strengtheners, so toughening up the skin of the plant, deterrent chemicals, so volatile compounds, smells and scents that attract in beneficials or deter that insect pest. Um, and again, many of these other um, defense kind of chemicals. Same deal with disease. Uh, it's the same slide. First, we take that building block and then we build different defense chemicals. So anti compounds that have antimicrobial properties, antibiotic type properties. Again, physical barriers, cell strengtheners, toughening up the skin of the plant, protective compounds, fats and lipids. A lot of um, uh, disease organisms, uh, fungi can't really digest those very well. Um, and again, um, they produce those root exudates to recruit microbes to also help um, mount this defense system. So again, that's, that's the fundamental theory and principle of um, how plants photosynthesize, how they manage their immune system. And again, we're measuring that um, with the BRICS meter over on the right-hand side, measuring these various compounds and making indirect assessments on what the mineral status might be. Um, there's the image that you're just talking about now. So I'll answer this question um, and then we'll, I'll be done. Um, we have, uh, we want the bricks to be as high as possible and as blurry as possible. And so here you can see a nice example with a low and a very crisp or a very sharp line. And over here we have a bricks that's high um, with more of a blurry line. The reason you want a blurry line and what you're tapping into there is this here. Coming back to this chart. When you see a crisp line, a very sharp line, you're measuring more smaller products of photosynthesis, the smaller, the simpler ones. So the small sugars, the basic ones, the building blocks, you're measuring more of these smaller co compounds. And that's okay, but as you, as you um, can see, we don't really want the plant full of sugar per se, we want it full of all these other beneficial compounds. And these are the ones that are the real uh, BRICS builders and immune supporters. So when you get um, a blurry line, you are measuring more complex compounds in that plant sap. Simpler compounds, sharp, more complex compounds, they give you the blurry line. So that's why you want the blurry, because these are the things that really add to the quality, to the flavor, to the shelf life, and to the plant um, immunity. So it is really these, these secondary compounds that we're really chasing um, that are the goal. And that's what you're detecting more through the through the blurriness. 